Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil, says St. Paul. How's that working for you, says Dr. Phil. <laughs> really, how is that working for you? There is so much to make us angry these days. My friend, the Reverend Bob Daniel says, rage, resentment, prejudice, envy, jealousy, and sheer hatred. These emotions and actions seem to dominate our times. They rule our highways, our workplaces, our homes, the White House and the Capitol, and our hearts. They rule in our hearts. A friend from West Texas sent Bob the following account from his local small town weekly newspaper. I love small towns and I love small newspapers. And here's what the article said. Mr. Spike Williams, who operates a sizable ranch south of town, has been having trouble with varmints, especially coyotes and armadillos. Last week, his rage got the best of him when, in his seething anger, he strapped a stick of dynamite to an armadillo he caught and lit the fuse. Upon opening the cage, the armadillo got away from him and ran under Mr. Williams' pickup truck. <laughs> the truck and the animal are a total loss. <laughs> and Mr. Williams is being fined $250 for cruelty to animals. I would have upped that fee. <clears throat> Bob says that there are events, there are individuals in groups that make us angry. And at times we are not able to express those potent feelings in healthy and helpful ways. In short, sometimes our anger and our rage get the best of us. Not me, of course. You. They get the best of you. All right. Stubbornness and a short fuse, unfortunately, runs in my family. And although I like to think of myself, much like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way, my family will tell you a different story. Now, my late mother, blessed be her name, my mama kept an astonishingly honest baby book about me. I thought you were supposed to lie in those books, telling the world just how wonderful and perfect your baby was, not my mother. Under the heading of being bad, Mama wrote, that she can be. Cindy had a quick and fierce temper from five months on. Now, I just reread that last night, and I am sure that my mother was confusing me with my sister Lynn. <laughs> Anger, rage, <coughs> even pettiness get the best of us. I've just finished reading Thomas Burton's autobiography, The Seven Story Mountain, about how this European wild child of the 1930s ended up as a monk in Kentucky. But even monastic orders could not immediately clothe him and hide all of his vices. There were a lot of surprising things in this book, but one of the things I was surprised about was when he kept describing a fellow novice when he entered into the monastery as fat boy. Fat boy. <coughs> it seemed as if fat boy's very existence, especially in a monastery, was enough to set Merton's teeth on edge. And he could hardly contain his delight when this pudgy <coughs> novice finally leaves. Fat boy, huh? I think we're all a little bit like this familiar prayer. Maybe you've prayed it. Dear Lord, so far I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a couple of minutes, God, I'm going to get up out of bed. And from then on, I'm going to need a lot more help. We cannot help but be angry at times. 
We can help how that anger is expressed. Say a quick prayer before you unload. Ask yourself if you would want someone to speak to you in that same fashion. And how about saving your anger for things that really, really matter? Cast your eyes to see what's happening beyond your own world. For example, is it all right that children right here in Augusta are being abused and we still don't have a real solution on how to get at that kind of anger and grief inflicted on the most vulnerable of our citizens? Doesn't that make you angry? Makes me angry. Is it all right that here in Augusta, there are women who are little more than sex slaves and that houses aren't the only things being rented out during the masters? Doesn't that make you angry? It should. Or perhaps, and I get it, maybe this is just too much to take in, it seems too big, and maybe we need to look at our lives first. Oh man, we could be perfect if it just weren't for all those other people. Perfect. Well, Jesus knows that, which is why he used St. Paul as a conduit to write about everyday morality to the people of Ephesus. Because before we begin to climb that seven-story mountain of a deeper walk with Jesus, we need to start on ground level. Maybe even start in the basement, where we store the less savory parts of our being from public view. Paul writes, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. Quote Bob again, Paul writes about everyday morality. And here Paul underscores that speech. That speech is immensely powerful, powerful for both good and evil. What we say and how we say it matters. It matters. It matters a great deal. Our age and our society are pressured, demanding, entitled, and often very cruel. Old assurances have gone, traditions have changed, the future's left with few guarantees. There are many indications that life in the future is going to be generally more demanding and competitive than in the recent past. There are also signs that speech is harsher, public expression less friendly. I can no longer watch cable news outlets for that very reason. Too much of CNN, too much of Fox, and I'm left thinking that it is okay to blow up at each other, especially with those whom I disagree. It's okay to call them names. It's okay to talk over them. It's okay to be rude. It's okay to interrupt because that's just the way of the world. And my world is more important than your world. My word is more important than your word. But what about the word of God? What about the word? God. Christians are called upon to exercise a different and higher standard. Jesus said, we are to love one another as I have loved you. At the retreat I led here yesterday on Sabbath time, I reminded our group how the King James Version of the Bible describes the people of God. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that old saint writes, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are still that peculiar people. Who are called to show love, not hate. Not just show it, embody it, act it out. That's the distinguishing mark of our faith. Even 2,000 years ago, when Christians were literally being persecuted, 
their enemies could look at them and say, see how they love one another. That was the distinguishing mark of following in the way of Jesus Christ. See how they love one another. So, I've got homework for you. School started, why should you be exempt? Here's your homework for this week. How are you going to share God's marvelous light this week? How are you going to share God's marvelous light this week? And maybe you really need to think about it, or maybe you just need to be open to all the occasions that will be presenting themselves to you this week. How will the command to love one another be expressed in your speech and your actions? How will people know that you love Jesus in your speech and your actions? Do you have a problem with your temper? As you know, I, of course, do not. Um, but some of you may. Do you have a problem with your temper? Well, take a moment this coming week to explore what makes you angry and how is it you regularly express it. Now, if you find some aspects that are damaging in your anger, ask God, new concept, ask God to assist with shifting those behaviors to seek a more Christ-like manner. Ask the Jesus within you to change you from inside out. Before you climb the Tower of Faith, check your spiritual basement. Make sure there's no black mold growing there. And beloved, remember, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.